嗨，大家好，我是主持人饶顺。今天我们很荣幸的邀请了一位很优秀的女士，来自 University of Pennsylvania， 她名字叫做 Miss Amy Nichols。Hi, Miss Nichols. Could you first introduce yourself a little bit more to our audience? Sure.、Uh, my name is Amy Nichols, and my title is Director of Implementation Assessment and International Initiatives. And I work for the College of Liberal and Professional Studies, which is in the School of Arts and Sciences for the University of Pennsylvania. Wow. Is this your first time here in China? No, I've been lucky to have、uh, traveled to China many times. Many times. Wow.、Yeah. So, what's your impression of China? Well, I must like it because I keep coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I love I love China. I first came here in two thousand one, on the day that China found. So it was, I think it, the exact date was July thirteenth, or almost exactly that. Wow. It was the day that China was awarded the two thousand eight Beijing Olympics. Wow. It was the first day I was ever so in Beijing. So you saw the parade in the street. Well, we landed that night. <laughs> And so there was all kinds of celebration. Yeah, it's like、um, a carnival.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a very special memory for me. Yeah. Very good, very good. Mm -hmm. mm, and you, ever since you keep coming back to China, I just keep coming back. <laughs> 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 you can't get rid of me. <laughs> Actually, if you have to name maybe three things you like most about China, what are they? Oh wow, China or Chinese people? Both. Okay. Okay. Anything in China. Well, I could combine that actually.、Yeah. I mean. My first is it's the people. People,、uh, okay.、Um, I find、uh, my friends in China are just so friendly and warm, and I really appreciate、uh, that warmth and that welcome, that、mm -hmm. welcome that I have, and the people that I've gotten to know. And I appreciate the openness because I think、uh, my friends from China have allowed me to learn a lot about difference in culture and also similarities.、Mm. So I've, I've enjoyed that very much. I'd say people.、Um, I would say history. Um, it was a dream of mine from being a little girl to see the Great Wall someday.、Um, so that was wonderful when I finally did in two thousand one. So definitely history. I've always been fascinated by history.、Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the third would be the food. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese cuisine. <laughs> yes. Yes,、uh, and it's so different all over the country, which yeah, is yeah. amazing. Yeah. So many different cuisines. I, I think in China we got eight popular. The cuisines. Yeah, I don't.、Yeah. Know, I haven't done all eight. I would say maybe <laughs> at least five or six. At least five, six.、Yeah. Which one is the one you like the most?、Mm. Cuisine from the north, cuisine from the south. That's hard because I've liked it all. The only I would say the one I have trouble with because I like many different、uh -huh. is when it's super super hot.、Oh. I'm not good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, not hot temperature, but yeah, it's spicy.、Cuisine. Yeah, if it's、oh. super hot, I, I it's hard for me. Because I can't, it's hard for me to enjoy it because all I taste is the hot. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I maybe I need more training.、Mm. So I've enjoyed most, but that when it's very very hot, that can be hard. I see. You、yeah. have to keep trying until you get used to it. <laughs> exactly. I think that's what it is. Good, good.、Yeah. And、um, we know you are you're from the University of Pennsylvania. That's、yes. one of the、uh, top universities in the world,、mm -hmm. Ivy League university.、Mm -hmm. right? I'm sure many students in in China are quite curious about what what's experience like. T O Oh, studying at the、uh, yeah, at your university. Can you、wow. share some of the experience with us? For example, you do have some Chinese students who are studying there, right? Yes, yes.、Um, boy, what's the experience like? I, I mean, I I hope it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> it must be no, good. No, I mean, I like it. University of Pennsylvania is an amazing university. There are、uh, world-renowned faculty and、yeah. students and opportunities. And one of the things that is so special about our campus is that all twelve of our schools、yeah. are on this in the same place. All twelve of your schools in the same all、place. in the same、oh. place. So you can walk from the hospital to the business school to the law school to the vet、oh. school. So all of our world-renowned research faculty are within walking distance, and wow, that's a、nice. really Special thing for a university that is our size and has our reputation,、mm -hmm. and so、um, the experience is very interdisciplinary、um, at at University of Pennsylvania because you can access all of these wonderful people.、Mm -hmm. um, but really, it comes down to the students. So、uh, whether we have、uh, students from China who are、uh, degree students there to study four years or a master's degree,、mm -hmm. or they're just visiting, for me, what makes、uh, world class. University world classes its students. So any students that are a part of our university are part of our excellence.、Mm. 
Nice, nice. Well, well said. And also, you know, oh, so I guess it must be really difficult to be, you know, accepted to be enrolled <laughs> yeah, into yes. your university, right? Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Then you also mentioned about uh, some non-degree programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe that's not that difficult. Right. Well, in a non-degree program, mm -hmm. there are certain requirements depending on what it is. It might mm -hmm. be a language requirement or it, it might just be uh, that you're a good student. But mm -hmm. they, they are less challenging in terms of acceptance. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you take them, you can get a kind of um, a teaser of what it's like. Right? Absolutely. Because you can be part of the pen experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, good, good. Can you tell us more about that program? Um, well, in terms of non-degree programs, there are English language programs, there are uh, summer experiential programs, um, and there, a non-degree does not mean non-credit. So you students mm -hmm. can come and study for a semester or a summer, they mm -hmm. can still get credit, it's just they don't stay for a full degree. I see. Then when they come back with the credit, what, what, what the credit can benefit, benefit them for? Well, that's up to their host university. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, uh, University of Pennsylvania, will give credit to certain classes, and mm -hmm. students, as long as they pass, get the credit from University of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. But in that kind of situation, it's really the host institution being the student's degree institution. It's their decision whether to award credit in terms of their eyes and also how much. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah. So any advice you can give to um students who are interested in the program, how they can make best of the experience taking the program? Wow. Well, the way to make the most out of any study abroad experience is to understand that you have learning in the classroom, but you also have learning out of awesome. the classroom. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And that um, in terms of getting the full benefit of studying at any other place than your home, uh, you need to remember that because what we find, unfortunately, for international students is sometimes they're so focused on their studies mm -hmm. that they go to class and then they live in the library and then they <laughs> go to class. And, they, and, and it, of course, your studies are important. Mm -hmm. we, I don't mean to say that, mm -hmm. but I, I do think that um, if you're not experiencing the culture and the life outside of the classroom, you're very much limiting the opportunities yeah. and the growth you could have from these. The many good things are missing out. So, so my big advice is get out of the library, but don't tell your parents. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. But really, it yeah. is it is part of yeah. our, our growth and development as human beings to be with other human beings and to experience new things. I and see, so, yeah. only studying, I think, limits personal growth in the I long see. run. Exactly. And so, I just really, I do advise students to not just study. To go out more. Go out. Yeah. Yes. Lambi find, libraries. Find some, yes. Yeah. Library is not the only place you can study. Right. When you're out of the library, you can exactly. still study. Exactly. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can. Definitely. Exactly. Wow. Very good. Very good. And also, know you. Uh, well, you you keep coming back to China ever since two thousand and one. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there must be many interesting uh, stories that happen, <laughs> things that happen to you. So any anecdotes wow. you can share with us? Um, well, there are many. I have to choose the right one. I think you. I, I read one that you were like a, a judge in a CCTV English competition. Yes, right. I've done. I've been uh, honored and lucky to do that for two summers. Oh, good. So I was a judge in 2016, and I was a judge this past summer, 2017. And in fact, this show is going to air on Monday. Oh, yeah. Next Monday. This Monday, oh, December fourth. Oh, wow. The show will air. Um, but yeah, the Star of Outlook English Talent Competition. Nice. So, so I've come here the past two summers and been a judge in that program. How do you like it? What's the experience? Oh, like? it's so much fun. <laughs> But the, the most uh, fun, I mean, it's fun to, I, I had never before doing it been in a TV studio or, you know, done anything, so that's fun. Mm -hmm. um, but the real fun is getting to know the contestants and the other judges, the people. For me, it's always the people. Oh, people so, yeah, I mean, yeah. It, uh, and, yeah. and you could, because you are the judge and then you, mm -hmm. you get to meet them. I think most of the contestants are really good students, right? Oh, uh, from, from, from different they're schools. They're amazing. And uh, any impression that you have? Their English is amazing because when you, well, for the students that I get to meet, they're the top 10 finalists in their age oh. group. And from what I've heard, mm -hmm. the, the contest starts every year with six million. Wow. So, one out of I'm, I'm seeing the top 10. <laughs> they're all amazing. And I'm sure yeah. the people that are the runners up are amazing too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, their English is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and the show really 
pushes them um, through lots of different things, which is hard for anybody, you yeah. know, whether they're in their first language or their second language. Mm -hmm. So it's um, what I've noticed is they all have a really good attitude, um, you know, because it, sometimes it's hard and it's challenging. Yeah. Um, really nice. All of them are super nice. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of their English, as I said, it's it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, and so the only thing that they get uh, that gets to be a struggle, but again, it's hard to tell whether it's an English thing or just Culture. the show. You the know, show. They, oh. they're on the they're on a Sta stage, stage with stage lights, <laughs> and, you know, yeah. and people yeah. are asking them questions, right? I see. Yes, so yes. I don't know whether it's an English or, or understandable stress. Yeah, yeah. Um, but sometimes it's hard to explain an answer and everything. But when you think about the courage and the work that it yeah. has taken for these young people to be on this show, it's just uh, inspiring, no matter yeah. what. Mm. No matter what. But they're all amazing. Wow, good, good. Thank you, thank you. You've got uh, all the uh, amazing experience that you have yeah. and they're saying all the amazing things about, about China and Chinese people. Mm -hmm. Based on your experience with many Chinese students, right, international mm -hmm. yeah. students, uh, what are some you know, difficulties do you think sometimes they are struggling with? The yeah. first difficulty students that China have that I work with is confidence. And that's why you'll often hear me as an instructor or as an administrator um, working on making students feel more confident in the skills they already have. Because mm. really one of the best ways to improve your English language skills is to try them. <laughs> to actually go out and talk to people. But yeah. if your confidence is getting in the way of your ability to do that, you are losing your opportunity to learn. Yeah. So go. one of my most important roles um, in working with students is, it, I feel, is to help build confidence because mm -hmm. much of the, the good learning that people do in language learning is, is risky. I mm -hmm. mean, it's just risky, right? You might embarrass yourself by using the wrong word or uh, saying yeah. something the wrong way. Um, but it's only in those moments where you take the risk, where you really learn whether you could do it right or you need to improve. Very good. Yeah. And so it's scary. But if, if you have some confidence, then you're more, I feel like, you're more willing to try. So, mm -hmm. so, so my biggest advice is have some confidence and try and understand that anybody trying to learn a second language, anybody, and it doesn't matter the language, has to take these risks. And yeah. so if your goal is to improve, you have to just take the risk that sometimes it might be embarrassing or awkward. But, but that experience is the way you're going to learn. Exactly. Yeah. That's so. also you can remember very yes. well. Right? That's yes, the moment exactly. I made a mistake. Next time when it happens again, you won't do I it again. won't do it again. And, but, yeah. and the thing to remind yourself is everybody who learns a language gets embarrassed sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Even, even, was, even, even your own language you get embarrassed exactly. sometimes. Exactly. Right? I tell people I barely <laughs> speak English. <laughs> so, no, but really, it's true, right? Yeah. I mean, if language learning were so easy that we never got embarrassed, we would all speak the all same. languages, all right? All languages, yeah. So the most important thing is to have enough confidence to try with whatever you have and then just keep going and keep reminding yourself, even in those embarrassing moments, that someone else in the world at that very moment had was embarrassed too. Yeah. And we all Remember, just Remember, you're through. not alone. <laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> very good, very yeah. good. And also, I know some, some Chinese students, they've got some uh, like, like old opinion. It's like, okay, whenever they speak English, they're like, okay, my vocabulary is not big enough. Uh, give me some time. I'll go back to maybe lock myself in a, in a mm -hmm. library, in mm -hmm. a in a classroom to memorize 10,000 words. When I'm able to memorize or remember 10,000 words, when suddenly I'll be able to speak fluent English. Is that true? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so it's great to know vocabulary. It's great to expand your vocabulary. But you would want to do it for a reason and a context. So yeah. I, I encourage students who want to expand their vocabulary to still keep trying with the vocabulary they have. Mm -hmm. And it's only then, so if you interact with people and you want to improve your vocabulary, talk to people who have a little bit of a better vocabulary. And it's while you're talking to them, you're going to hear the words that mm -hmm. they use. And you'll understand what words you might want to know and how to use them. Exactly. Because yeah. the hard thing is if you just memorize vocabulary, 
you don't speak in that way. I mean, we don't speak in lists of vocabulary, right? Exactly, we yeah. speak in phrases and sentences. Exactly. So the only way to truly learn vocabulary is to know how to use it. Mm, it's not yes. just do you know the word and the definition. You need to know how to use it. Mm -hmm. And so that's where it's so important for you to get out and try. So I very much discourage people from memorizing vocabulary mm -hmm. and instead go out either. It doesn't need to be speaking. It could be reading. You could read a new book and then you find a new word and you can look at it that way. Yeah. But then you have a context, a way that it's used and it helps you learn better. Exactly. So vocabulary cannot be learned like separately. It has yeah. to be in a context. Yes. Like yes. When it's in the context, it has a specific meaning. Then you know yes. how it's used in the in the context, in the sentence. Exactly. But also trust yourself to guess the meaning first. That's something we love to teach students oh. to do. Mm -hmm. So if you read it in a sentence or hear it in a conversation, think about what we were talking about or what you're reading and make a guess about whether first thing is, is the does the word have a positive, negative or neutral meaning? Mm -hmm. And even just being able to guess that tells you something about your ability to understand the, the overall meaning of the sentence and the word. Very and the good. better, and so it's a really good skill to guess. And here's why. Not only because you don't always have, you can't always pick up your smartphone or look up a dictionary, mm -hmm. look up a word in a dictionary in the moment. Um, so that's the practical reason. The other reason is English is my first language and I still hear words I don't know and I can't look them really? up. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. So. You need the ability to guess the meaning of words, and we all do it all the time when you think mm. about it. I mean, sometimes you might read a newspaper article or a oh, book, yeah, right? Yeah. And you, you really, in your own language, you usually either skip over the word, you think, oh, that's probably this or that, and you keep reading, mm -hmm. right? But for some reason, with language learners, we think we need to look up every single word, when really that's not how we relate to our language. Yes, yes. So I really encourage people to look, to guess the meaning of words first, and only start looking up a word if you see it a lot. Exactly. Or you've heard it before and you think, oh, I want to be able to use that word. Yes, then look yes. it up to make sure. But often you can guess the meaning and you're fine. Yeah. So if you hear that word again and again, you know yeah. that's frequently used, right? Exactly. It's kind of like you see someone's wearing good clothes, okay? Again and again. Oh, that's popular. Exactly. That's in fashion. I want to have that too. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's why their approach of memorizing lists doesn't, to my mind, isn't really effective. Yeah, yeah. But you hear words that you want to be able to use and then you can focus on those exactly. words. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And also, yeah. when you guess is something, guess the, the words right, that helps you gradually build your confidence. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It builds your cool. confidence. It builds um, it builds your um, confidence not only in your ability to guess a word, but your ability to understand the overall meaning of any interaction. Yeah, yeah. And that's really what's important, right? Mm -hmm. Is that you can understand the general meaning. Yes. Whether or not you understand every single word someone says, as long as you understand the general meaning, that's the point. Yeah. And then that gives you more confidence to keep going out and talking to more people. And over time and over time, you're going to pick up all these words. Exactly. But it's yeah. a little bit by little bit. Mm. Yeah. And you have to enjoy doing so. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Good, good. Thank you so much for sharing those uh, really valuable tips on how to improve, the, improve English. And also, with a better English skill, you'll be able to take the summer program, right? Yeah. To have bad experience studying abroad. Yeah. Mm. I mean, just keep on working on your English and understand that if you can, and you can come to the University of Pennsylvania, we'd love to have you, or any other university in the United States, um, one of the best ways to improve your English is to move to a country where everything's in English. Mm -hmm. And because then you'll get the true test of your ability to interact um, in everyday life, buying things at the store, ordering things at a restaurant, mm -hmm. and in a classroom, studying the things that are most interesting to you. So we welcome you to the University of Pennsylvania in the summer or during the school year, but I also just personally want to encourage you to keep learning your English, but also thank you for uh, being a country and a people that have always been so welcoming, at least to me and my family, and I look forward to getting to know China more. Well, thank you so much mm -hmm. for thank taking you. the interview. Wish you all the best. Thank you.